I'm going to repair my DLP television. The color wheel has been damaged and I'm going to pull that out, show how I found that, uh, what condition it was in and, and how to get to the part. Just for abbreviation for the video and for some of the instruction, I've already removed the cover on the back. That's set in there and uh, most of the screws come out. You can see different spots, but some of them can stay. There's like two of them I think that stay, but either way, there's the cover. We don't need that anymore. Bring some light over here. I pulled out the carriage a little bit just for, uh, again, sake of shortening the video. One of the first things you're going to have to do is remove the grounding strap here that's attached with a screw. So you can see it just flops over if you want. And some of the cable connections, I'll go through those real quick before we move, remove the carriage. This is a cable that is real simple. It plugs in right back up in here. You'll see that if you look for it. Pretty simple to do. It's like on a computer. Uh, this cable here will need to be removed. I've already got it loose. So it comes out off the top. It's just so that the carriage can come out. All these cables I'm showing you are so that you can pull the carriage out and uh, the other ones can remain intact. This one over here, as you can see, is attached apart from the carriage. It connects down here normally. Oh, I forgot one cable, as you can see here. This one here, as, again, I already had it loose. So that's off to the side. So I'm going to pull this carriage out and then put it over on the counter. The actual part we're going to be replacing the color wheel is this unit right here. This is the lamp housing. It has one screw that you end up turning out. I've just got it setting there. And then it, it slides out once the screw is removed. And it'll slide in just as easy as that came out pretty much. The other screws that you need to remove are on this unit here and they are actually down here this whole whole fan assembly is, is going to lift off and it makes it easier to get the color wheel out you might be able to do it without it but it's definitely easier with it out screws are already loose just for demonstration that's why I've got them there You can see how these wires went over to this area. It may or may not be an issue. You just pull it off to the side. Just leave it as a package. The color wheel is close to being ready to come out. There's two screws that mount that down. One is right down in here, and the other is right here. So this is the two of those. I've already got those taken out. You need to, because this is connected to it, you need to take it, take this connector out of this position. And this one actually comes out of this little location right in here. And it's just the flat part of the ribbon. It doesn't have an end on it. It's meant to be pushed and pressed in or just pulled straight out. So I gently pulled that straight out, freeing that. So now it's time to take the color wheel out. See the two cables come with it. Some of the color wheel's fine. I've already taken this up, as you know, down inside in the bottom over where it was setting, down in here, it was full of all these fragments from the part of the color wheel that had broke and shattered. This particular color wheel has uh, two colors, 
each on a wheel. It's called a six color wheel. Some of them are only three color wheels. As I've been told by the uh, distributor. This is my new part. Protection foam on there. And you can see how colors are in this particular wheel. This housing here needs to have the screws loosened up. It doesn't need to come completely out, but it needs to be loosened so that the color wheel can be inserted easier and then the screws can be tightened down again once the color wheel is secured into place. So I've began to uh, reinsert the color wheel into place and just in review there's going to be a mounting screw right down in here there's one right here this cable here, this blue one, blue and two white wires will be inserted back here and then this flat one here will again be placed in here with the contacts of the silver contacts against the contacts in the connector. Make sure it's not reversed. Alright, for putting this color wheel in here I needed to start pressing in on this this side of it first to get to go in and then rock it over. Got to be careful that you don't hit the color wheel on anything as you're dropping it in there. That would be unfortunate after you ordered your part. This part here with the ribbon cable I'm inserting that and I took some electrical tape with some needle nose to protect it so I can grab it and push it down into the spot that it needs to be. Now regarding this cable with the blue wire and white wires, you'll notice that the, let's see if I can do this here, these two little bumps, I noticed as I was putting the cable in that the, it didn't want to depress in there, so I looked closer you don't want to bend those pins over that it goes to. Uh, it uh, mates up to. Those bumps there actually go on this side. So I needed to rotate it around so that that part actually fits down this direction. Which I'll do next. Alright, I got the cables in place. I got the mounting screws in place. I'm going to put this fan back in place. Remember we've got three screws here, one, two, and over here. And then we're going to take this part and slide it in. And then it'll have the one screw that will fasten into here. I'll complete that now. The lamp assembly is in place, the cooling fan assembly is in place, all the screws are fastened and tightened. Just in review, I really didn't need to disconnect this cable as I originally thought when I took it apart. And I didn't need to take apart this cable either, which goes to the house, housing here, the lamp housing assembly. I was thinking earlier that that was part of necessity to remove everything, but it's not the case. I just remembered where this cable end goes. It actually goes back here, which didn't need to be removed. So this process is actually simpler than I originally thought. Again, the carriage goes back on the television, right in there, and I'm going to prepare that now. So as I was assembling this carriage back into the television, I wanted to point out something that really helped. Right here, these two little ears right here, and right here. If you take and lift this carriage, there's a lip on the back there. Can't see it now, but this part of it anyway. You need to have that above and on top of these. So lift this bottom end up pretty high. 
as you're sliding it in and keep that plastic ri rib or ridge on top of here until it gets past and then you can slowly drop the carriage down and it'll be right on right on the spot that it needs to be otherwise the foam and everything hangs up in here and it doesn't want to go in so we're going to put this cable over in this area this here is going to go back down into here this one let's see we got uh, this larger one here it's going to go here looks like and then uh, this one here goes up here you're going to see how they typically fit anyway the, the ends have to fit a certain way so I'm going to put those in place and put my iPhone down so I can do that. So I've got the wire connections made. I've also got the, the screws that mount it back in plus this grounding strap here. And I'm ready to put the cover back on and the piece that fits in here for the ventilation. So I've got the cover partially on. I'll just put a couple of screws in just in case i got to get back in there. This switch it's a limit switch so that when this uh, piece here wants to fit into place, it's meant to protect you from having blinding light so it knows when the, that part is inserted. So it pushes against here and enables the circuit to complete. I've heard and read that sometimes this switch is a problem. It either needs to be taped down and tie wrapped or some way to keep it depressed because the plastic insert is not actually making contact or enough contact or you actually have to jumper out these wires here to uh, complete the circuit. We'll see if mine is a problem here but I thought I'd make that as a note because uh, it's pretty critical whether or not that is actually completing the circuit or not. It's not the components inside Sometimes it's this safety switch. Now's the time to test it, and I thought I'd get close enough so you can listen to it as it fires up, if it fires up properly. We're going to fire it up now. The high-pitched whine is a good sound. That's the sound of the color wheel hitting, uh, I don't know, seven to 9,000 RPM, something like that. I can see back in there, lamp is on, so we know that our safety switch is working. And the signal is getting stronger. So we have accomplished the color wheel replacement. Time to put the tools away and to relish in the thought that I saved hundreds of dollars replacing myself with a part sent to me second day air for a total of $111. So may that be some encouragement to you if you're going to change your own color wheel on your DLP television. Mine happens to be a 61 inch DLP. I think it was made in 2005.